All right, hello everybody. Peter here once again, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look at um, a few more another thing that someone has sent in to draw with. Got like a box. I found this at the postal service. I thought if it was the government's, then it must belong to us, the people. This isn't private use if I'm sharing it with you guys, right? Also, this guy right here, I'm sorry, dude, but the Postal Service or somebody uh, ripped your letter clear in half. And it came repackaged in this. Ripped it, snapped it clear in half. Here's what was inside of it. This paper and, and this letter was inside of it. And he sent me this pen. Totally destroyed. Ripped in half and then like taped back together. That's crazy. To totally useless, but he wrote it. Oh, there's like a tiny spider I just squished. That was mean of me. He wrote me a nice letter that I had to like piece back together. That was from Colin. Thank you, Colin, for the stuff. Even if it got destroyed and it was totally unusable. I appreciate that. All right, this one, I've already actually opened a little bit, but I'm not entirely sure what is in here. There's a bunch of Amazon gift slips and it says do a dot art. It's like a command with an exclamation point after it. Sponge tip applicator. It's fun. It's easy. No cups, no brushes, no mess. Ages three to 103. I knew it was going to be one of those things. If you're 104, you're out of luck. And more actual pens. Looks like we have a elephant. We have an elephant pen. And a lion pen. Do li are these naturally in nature together? Like, li do lions ever eat elephants? Or do elephants ever... <gasps> it's got an elephant foot and everything. And a little lion paw. They don't smell like the safari, but they... Well, actually, I've never been to safari. I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Um, uh, hello, Peter. I had taken a class where the teacher raved about dot markers, but I don't get it. I think you're within the correct age range to try them. The elephant and lion may wish to participate in art festivities. Enjoy, Maria. Well, thank you, Maria. What kind of art class do you have been in where a teacher raved about do a dot art markers? Shake well, press tip on paper to start flow, dab on paper to create dots and doodles. They do sound juicy. I like that about them. For some reason, I have this irresistible urge to use these on my mirror, on my bathroom mirror. And if it's irresistible, if it's truly irresistible, then that's what I'm going to do. And so I dippity did it, because I'm a dippity doer, I suppose. But sometimes it doesn't always pay off to just go do things, because these little dot pens were clearly not meant or intended for drawing on mirrors. They just weren't. They were too transparent, lucent, opal, opalescent. They just were not good for it, okay? And so... Even though in the, on the instructions it said don't use, use it on non-porous surfaces, household items, maybe that just meant because it was, it would like if you used it on your wall, it would not come off the wall. I don't know what they meant, but th it's just not good on mirrors. Some other things, I'll, I'll draw on a mirror later, and it'll be awesome, it'll be great, and it'll be, uh, it'll be really cool, mostly because I'll be in the shot. But so later, I, f I, I gave up on the mirror pretty quickly. Um, that stuff is still on my mirror. It is, and I I got a big roll of paper that I used earlier for drawing with a banana on the wall. And I took that same big roll of paper I haven't used since then, and I have like some weird wall divider thing. I propped it up against something else. I unrolled it. I stapled it and taped it all over things. I somehow affixed it to it. Painter's tape is notoriously a struggle for me and something I struggle with. It's a, it's a, it is a daily struggle for me, painter's tape, getting it to do anything useful. It's not really good for holding things places. It almost, it's like a tease. It holds things, 
for about five minutes, or as soon as you look away, painter's tape will just, it just lets go. It, it like uncurls, it curls the opposite direction as you taped it or curled it. I don't know, it's, it's almost got a mind of its own. It's a little devious and devilish. But anyways, I ended up stapling this paper to this other thing I was, I mean, I, I don't know, I wrote off my security deposit a long time ago, but they can probably, if, if I ever get out of this apartment, they'll probably try to bill me for some other stuff, like repainting the walls, but they always repaint the walls between tenants anyways, so I don't see what the big deal is, right? Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll burn that bridge when I get to it. Anyways, I know I say anyways a lot. This came with five colors, blue, yellow, purple, pink, and silver. I only used four of the colors. I did not use silver because it's just gray and that seemed really boring and pointless. And I didn't feel like using gray. So I just used the blue, yellow, purple, and pink. Some of these colors went well together to create other colors. Like if you put the, wait, let's see, the blue and the, wait, how, what? there's like some weird color math. Does anyone, does anyone here know color math? Like blue plus yellow? Is that green? And then I also learned, the best way to learn this stuff is just hands-on. I also learned that yellow plus pink is orange. And the color math changes if you're doing color, wait, like color and light. That's the difference between RGB and CMYK. All right, I don't want to get into it now, mostly because I have no idea what I'm talking about, but there is a difference, you know? That's the difference between light and, like, printer toner and stuff like that. Just so you know. Just so you know, I don't know. I do. It's good to know when you don't know, though, and I know I don't know. That's like that whole known, known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. That's a known unknown for me. All right. But I had a good time. I learned that, um, like, blue and... Purple mixed with a lot of things made just a weird murky brownish color, which is, is good though for making sh dark shades of things. Purple is kind of a good color for shadows. You know, the, if you if you go to um, like painting classes and stuff, they'll tell you that there aren't any real true blacks in nature and, and stuff like that. It's just like shadows and stuff like that are all um, like dark purples and blues. I don't know if I really buy into all that because I love just drawing with just like the darkest black pen, ink pen I can buy it. And I'm, what's the point in really making everything look exactly like nature anyways? Cause nature and the real world is already out there looking like nature and the real world. Why would I want to come? I absolutely imitate that. Let's just take a picture or go look at it. If you want to look at it, go create something new. Anyways, p different people have different goals with their art. You go do whatever you want. I'll stay in here doing whatever I want. But I did use purple. And so these do remind me of those little um, dot pens with the little sponge tips, sponge tip applicators you use for like decorating people's cars, um, for like pranks, for like after weddings, or maybe for um, showing off your favorite fo football team for tailgating or whatever. And I didn't even think about them being suspiciously similar to bingo card applicators until I posted this on Instagram and everyone was like, did you do this with bingo thing? I'm a what's it's, I guess I'm not, um, you know, as tuned into the bingo, the whole bingo circuit as I could be, or as I should be truly as I should be. Whenever I think of bingo, I just think of sitting there with a card and bingo. But then if you go to bingo, like the people that are serious about bingo sit there with like a whole table covered with multiple bingo cards and they, it's like a whole, Really, when you get into the enthusiast level stuff, like people are serious about it, it gets almost inter almost anything can be very interesting when people are really serious about it. Even bingo, it's, it, and it is it is interesting. It's fun to look at. It's fun to watch. Anyways, these are pretty similar to bingo markers, but they're like rebranded as art supplies, which is pretty clever. I wonder what else, I wonder what else could be rebranded as art supplies. Just general general things. I'm going to go daydream about that. Hmm. Squeegees? I don't know why that's the first thing that popped into my head. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Uh, you're, uh, uh, I can't think. Bye.